All right, starting at number 10, unsanctioned connection. Reddit user Stars and Severance shared an experience they had when they were younger. When they were 12, they got their first phone for Christmas. Then, one night over the holidays, they had a crazy realistic dream. In the dream, they went to a girl's house making line faces out of construction paper. And the girl in this very vivid dream had long red hair and looked nothing like anyone they knew. Then, the next day after this dream, they got a text from an unknown number. It said something along the lines of, you'll never guess who I am. And then after some back and forth guessing, thinking it's one of their friends, the number sends a picture of a lion plate, just like in the dream. Then the next photo is a selfie and the person texting had long red hair. Then through other texting and a one-sided game of 20 questions, it turns out this girl with the red hair knows all about the person receiving the text messages. So then they text for about three days before the girl texting them said, lose my number, forget me. She stated, they are mad because I reached out to you. And Who's they? Well, the user who shared this story didn't question the arguments of the girl and deleted the number in the text, never hearing from the girl again. But this leads me to think, from a dream to reality, this girl appeared. One explanation is a parallel universe. Think about it. Dreams can sure be wild and weird, but what about those times it feels just like real life? Can that be another universe trying to make a connection without freaking us out? Maybe. All right, let's look at another text. Next, at number nine, disappearing texts. Random user on Reddit shared this experience they had. Their girlfriend was working at a restaurant that night and sent them a text that read, hey, I'm picking you up food when I'm done, so don't eat anything, love you. And this message appeared during an emergency broadcast alert and then disappeared right after the alert. This seemed odd, so the person restarted their phone and went to go pick up their girlfriend from the restaurant. When they picked her up, she said they should go somewhere to eat, which threw them off because didn't she just say she was grabbing them food? But she said her phone was off the whole time she was at work never sent a text. The author of the story said they saw her turn on her phone as if it was off the whole time and there was no evidence of a text sent. But the text they received came from the girlfriend's number. So their explanation, it must have been sent from an alternate universe, a parallel one where their girlfriend was going to get them food and this was just a glitch in the matrix that disappeared once it slipped out. And texts aren't the only thing to slip through the matrix. Next, at number eight, an unexplainable photo. So Reddit user Jake Venom had a scare seven years ago when he found a photo on his phone he couldn't explain. He was making some iced tea with a new tea maker and sent a photo to his buddy's group chat when the previous photo in his phone caught his eye. The previous photo was supposed to be the screenshot from Twitter he sent to a friend last night, but it wasn't. It was a blurry photo of what he recognized as the kitchen of his childhood house, but he hadn't been to that house. He sent the Twitter screenshot before he went to bed and then he sent the tea maker photo when he was making tea in the morning. So this obviously freaked him out. He said he kept having a weird feeling when he was looking at the photo and there was no reasonable explanation for it, so he ended up deleting it to stop feeling that uneasy feeling. But another Jake Venom in another timeline still lives in that house and took a photo in his kitchen that never showed up on his phone, I'm thinking. It could be. These alternate parallel universes must be like so missed. And so these have been digital so far, but what about a person who says they are from a place that no one knows exists or doesn't exist? At number seven, from Lexaria. Back in 1851, a man who called himself Jofar Voren or Joseph Voren was found as he was wandering a German village. Joseph was speaking in broken German, but also spoke and wrote in unknown languages that he called Laxarian and Abramian. He said he was in Europe to find his long lost brother, but he suffered in a ship Wreck, as he came from Lexaria, which is in an area of Sacria. Now, if that doesn't ring a bell in your head, no, it didn't ring any bells for any of the officials trying to help this man out. He couldn't find where he was from. Any maps or globes didn't match what he knew. He called the five great continents of Earth Sacria, Alfar, Astar, Ulslar, and Yurplar, which doesn't match any of ours. People think he somehow fell into our universe from one much different from our own and much further away from where he anticipated to find his brother, but what do you think? But next, more of something different. At number six, experiencing different days. This one comes from Stewie2Griffin34 on Reddit, who was watching another one of our Parallel Universe videos a couple months ago. It got them thinking of a weird day they themselves had. Their friend Kate, on break from her way to detention, said that their friend Nick wasn't in that day. But when they both got home, they got texts from both Nick and Kate saying that no, Nick was in school and did 
attention and everything that day. And then Kate said that she hadn't told them that Nick wasn't in because she never took a break outside detention. So then they were all confused. And then on top of that, Nick said that he saw them go into the library that day and was at school, saying the user who posted this was just acting distant. Then the next day, the user, trying to figure out what was happening, tried to get other opinions, and Nick's friends said, no, Nick wasn't in the day before. So was this a prank or different people experiencing different days? And I swear, I remember when people tell me something specific, and then they say, no, that never happened, and I get confused, so, ah, what is the truth? On to number five, missing graveyard. Reddit user City Loves Chew says her mom was the one to have the trippy experience in this one. The mom in question was traveling with a friend in Old Lyme, Connecticut to a beach they often went to, Hawk's Nest Beach. They had free time one day and explored the area and ended up finding a cool cemetery called the Lord's Cemetery with a big red gate. They checked it out, took some cool pictures, and then left. No biggie. But the next day, they couldn't find the same spot again. They asked people in town, police officers, everybody, and no one had heard of it. They tried to find it in the years following, but couldn't find it, even with the help of Google Maps. Plus, the photos they took were gone. No explanation. Which, when you think about it, is a grave experience from a parallel universe. And okay, that was a bad pun, we'll move on to the next one. Sorry. Next is number four, from Denny's to Pennies. So what if suddenly something so basic and normal to you was changed without question and everyone then accepted it as the norm? Well, this happened to Reddit user is underscore emo. Back when they were a kid, they went to Denny's pretty often. So they were kind of shaken when one day when they were young, their dad shook them awake and said, hey, we're heading to Penny's. And so they were all like, you mean Denny's, right? And their dad was like, no, Penny's. So they kind of accepted this, maybe it's a joke, and they roll up, but the yellow sign that is supposed to say Denny's is changed to Pennies. So now this kid is freaking out, but trying to keep cool, hide it. And yeah, you might be thinking this was just a one day thing, maybe it was just shaking up, but no. They passed by this sign every day to school for a month, and all their friends at school kept saying it had always been Pennies anytime this person asked. But then, a month later, boom, Denny's again. So the kid asks his dad if it's changed, and their dad looks confused and asks, what? What do you mean? And so the kid plays it cool, but it shook them up for a while. Shook them up until they heard about possible parallel universes, and then it made total sense to them. What do you think Denny's is called in other universes? That's what I want to know. But anyways, the realization that there might be other universes doesn't come to everybody. At number three, Guardian Angle. Now, a 28-year-old in Washington, D.C. named Lindsay got a scare from an unknown number. Whoever it was had bad spelling and used shortened text speak, sending sayings such as, Lindsay, I see you, with Lindsay misspelled and the words all in letter form. But this wasn't what scared her though, even though there was one text that said, I'm your guardian angle. What scared her is when she started getting texts about what she was doing currently, things that could only be described if someone was watching her, talking about her watching TV and saying they were standing right next to Lindsay. Lindsay had enough of this, it was freaking her out, and she called the number that she got from the landline, but the line said the number wasn't in service. Then the number texted her saying, why did you have to do that? And you know what you did. And so this was enough for Lindsay to get really shaken, so she got the police to help her investigate, but nothing came out of it. Now what I think is this was a trickster from a parallel universe playing a prank on her. But what do you think it could be? Something a little more paranormal? But moving on to number two, unsent text. Sometimes the story doesn't come from the person who gets the wild text, but the person who gets the reaction to it. Reddit user Trodat5204 had her sister call her out of the blue over a text she allegedly sent her. Her sister said she sent a text saying, hey, insert some unusual pet names she sometimes calls her sister, I'm in this city now, I'm scared but it's okay and it's safe here, your sister. So. The person who posted this obviously censored their information, so that's why it reads kind of weird and I keep doing brackets. But anyways, her sister is calling her to demand to know why she's in a different city, why she got this text from a different number, and wants to know what's going on. So the person who got called clarifies the situation for her sister, and they call this other number together. But it just keeps on ringing. They couldn't reach what they thought to be a reasonable explanation, so the Reddit post says it could be maybe three things. One, a coincidence. Two, a joke. Or three, a parallel universe. Someone in another universe was scared and lost, but the text got sent to the wrong sister in the wrong universe. But on to number one, alternate universe FaceTime. Reddit user Anonymous5000 left a story of what they described as a glitch in the Matrix story on the comments of another post. What they experienced they could only describe as a FaceTime call from another universe. 
This user is the father of a 6 year old daughter and they keep in touch over FaceTime when she stays at her mom's house. Well, he's talking to her daughter, having a long conversation over FaceTime when she starts asking if her mommy and daddy are going to be together forever. He then gets confused because he's been separated from her mom for 3 years at that point. But she goes on to explain that no, they're together and that when he comes home they all watch TV together. So she keeps talking until the reception cuts it off and he calls back, kind of confused, and then his daughter is in different clothes. He laughs it off and asked if she hung up to change and then this guy said, his daughter said, I never hung up, you just called me dad. So he says, no we were just talking on the phone but she says, no they weren't. So then, as I would too, this guy freaked out. This reddit user says the other call must have been from a parallel universe where the two parents were still together. And the guy gets the chills thinking about how it could have happened. Imagine the alternate universe daughter who's thinking her dad is rambling on about not being with her mom. Kinda wild. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have the story of Carol Chase McCallany. One day in 2006, Carol was driving through San Bernardino, California on her way to Paris, California, where she was going to stay for a few days. On her travels, she saw a sign for Riverside, which was nearby, and she decided that since her family had roots there, maybe it was time to stop in for a visit. As she went into Riverside, she realized that everything looked different from how she remembered it, and was unable to find her old house that she grew up in. She tried to go to the street that her grandmother used to live on, but that one was different too. And when she tried to visit her grandparents' graves at the cemetery, the whole place didn't even exist. Even the people who were living in the town gave Carol a bad feeling, and she didn't even want to get out of her car. She decided she would just be better off continuing on her trip and left Riverside. Carol didn't end up returning to Riverside until a few years later, after her dad had passed and she was attending the funeral. To Carol's surprise, when she went to Riverside this time, everything was as she remembered it from her childhood. Carol believes that day that she ended up in some sort of parallel universe form of Riverside and she even said that she felt like if she left her car that day, she was going to get stuck there. In our number 9 spot we have this story from Peru. The Marcoasi forest in Peru has been called a doorway to another dimension for centuries because of all the stone figures that resemble human faces and religious figures and because of the amount of people who go missing and never get found. There was a group of friends who decided to enter the forest despite all of these stories and they ended up stumbling upon a cabin that appeared to have some sort of party going on inside. As the group went up to the cabin, they saw people inside but all of the people were in 17th century garb and nothing that was modern or similar to what the group of friends was wearing. One of the friends began to try and enter the cabin and was halfway in the door when the friends quickly pulled her back. After being pulled out, it was discovered that the half of her body that had entered the cabin was now paralyzed. If her body really did become paralyzed because it had entered another dimension, that would definitely explain all of those strange stone statues. In our number 8 spot we have the old story of the green children of Woolpit. In the 12th century, it is said that two children were discovered just outside of Woolpit, Great Britain, but what was so weird about them is that they had green skin. When the children were brought back into the city and given food and water, they refused to eat anything other than raw beans. Eventually, their green skin began to fade and turned into a more normal human color. One of the children passed away, but the girl continued to grow and eventually learned English. When she was finally able to communicate with those around her, she told the story of how her and her brother had come from a place that was in constant darkness called St. Martin's Land. Everyone from her town lived underground and everyone had the same green skin. The girl and her brother were wandering around one day when they came across a cave and they decided to enter. They kept walking and eventually came to Woolpit and when they turned around, the cave they had been in disappeared. Did this cave act as a portal to an alternate reality for these kids? If so, I don't ever want to end up where they come from because it does not sound nice. Guys, before I continue on in this list, make sure you hit that like button because it really helps us out. In our number 7 spot today we have the story of James Richards. In 2009, James was walking his dog when he tripped and knocked his head, rendering him unconscious. When he woke up, he found himself beside some sort of machine he didn't recognize, and there was another man named Jonas who said he had just found James 
his body while he was on a work trip for the interdimensional travel company that he worked for. What? The two ended up striking up some sort of conversation, I guess like you would when someone just casually tells you that they travel through dimensions for work. They started chatting about what pop culture was like in each of their dimensions, and they came to discover that, of course, the Beatles existed in both of their dimensions. Jonas ended up explaining that in his dimension, the Beatles were all still alive and they had never actually broken up. Jonas gave James a cassette tape of the Beatles music from his dimension that certainly does not exist in ours. When James returned to our universe, he ended up uploading the tape to a website called The Beatles Never BrokeUp.com. In our number six spot, we have a story from Reddit that was posted by the user Two Hum Folk. One day, the writer was driving home from school and began trying to call their boyfriend using the hands-free feature. The phone didn't end up ringing even after five separate attempts, so they turned the phone off and then on again and tried one more time. This time, the boyfriend answered, but it didn't really sound like the person they knew and loved, and they also sounded like they were pretty freaked out. He said, Liz, is this you? Liz kept saying hello, but wasn't getting an answer, and panicked and hung up the phone. Liz tried calling again twice, but there was no ring again. Luckily, on the third try, another voice picked up the phone and asked, is this better? Liz then asked who this was, and the voice responded with something unintelligible, and then they hung up. Liz continued to call the boyfriend until he picked up the phone. Sounding significantly more like himself and not panicked at all, Liz asked who was picking up the phone earlier, and the boyfriend explained that no one had picked up the phone because he had never received any other calls. When Liz got home and checked the boyfriend's call log, they realized that only one call had gone through to his phone. Liz made sure that they were dialing the right number when they were calling, and it was the correct number every single time. Who had been answering the boyfriend's phone? At our number five spot and halfway mark, we have another Reddit post from Tiger King Quinton. The user explains that this story takes place when they were eight years old in Florida with their family and their friend's family for a two week vacation. The friend really wanted to go to Wet n Wild and begged for his parents to take them there, so they ended up going one day during the trip. The boy and his dad ended up going into the wave pool that day and were mainly staying in the shallow area. After a while, a larger wave comes their way and it takes the boy underneath the water. He realizes he can't feel the bottom anymore and begins to panic trying to break the surface of the water. When he reaches the top and gets his head out of the water, he realizes that he is no longer at wet and wild, but is in the middle of an ocean a couple hundred meters from an island. He doesn't know where or what this island is, but after a few seconds he begins to feel lightheaded and sinks back into the water. Luckily he then feels some hands under his arms and he realizes his dad is lifting him out of the water back at wet and wild, asking him if he's alright. Maybe this wave pool really did take this kid to an alternate dimension. In our number 4 spot we have a story coming from Tokyo in 1954. At the Haneda airport, a plane from Europe landed and dropped off its passengers. As the passengers made their way through customs, one man told the officials that he was just on a normal business trip that he made regularly. He spoke French as his first language, but could also speak Japanese and a few other languages. Officials then asked him where he was from, and his response is where things take a turn. He said he was from a place called Torrid, which was on the border between France and Spain. When officials told him that the place didn't exist, he gave them a passport that had been issued by this country that isn't real. This passport had also been stamped, validating all of the previous trips he had said he went on, including his previous trips to Japan. Officials called the company that he said he was meeting with, and the company said that they had never heard of him or his company before. They then called the hotel he said he had a reservation at, and the bank that was listed on his checkbook. The hotel said that there was no reservation for him, and the bank just didn't exist at all. Officials thought that maybe he was confused, so they showed him a map and pointed to the country of Andorra, asking him if this is what he meant. The man began to get upset, saying that Andorra didn't exist, 
coast and that it had misplaced Torrid where he claimed to be from. Customs decided to detain the man and put him in a hotel room for the night while they decided what to do next. The next day when they went to collect the man, he had totally disappeared with all of his personal identification and documents. Police searched for this missing man but he was never found. Maybe this man somehow accidentally found himself in a parallel universe separate from his own and I just hope he was able to make it back to wherever he was from and return to his normal life. In our number 3 spot we have the story of a man named Jafar Vorin. Jafar was a strange man who just appeared in a village one day before he was picked up by authorities. The language he spoke was closest to German, but even then it wasn't quite the same. Jafar said he was from a place called Sakria and that he was searching for his brother who had been lost in a shipwreck. He couldn't point out where he was from, but was able to tell authorities some geographical information about where he had come from. He explained that his home had five separate compartments or continents called Sakria, Athlar, Aslar, and Uplar. He couldn't show anyone how he had arrived at the village and he had no idea how to get home, so he just ended up living out the rest of his life in Berlin. It's crazy to think that maybe he was a man from another dimension and he ended up just getting stuck here. I feel bad for him and I wish we could have helped him return home. In our number two spot we have the story of Pedro Ramirez. Pedro was driving from a place called Seville to his home in Alcala de Guadera on a November night in 1986. As he went around a curve in the road, he suddenly found himself on a six lane highway and as he continued to drive straight, he saw tall buildings, unidentified structures and grass that was two feet tall growing alongside the road. These were all things that were out of the ordinary for that area. He continued driving and suddenly Pedro heard a voice that told him he had been transferred to another country in a different hemisphere. Pedro didn't know what to do so he kept driving for another hour before stopping on the side of the road to take a look around. After a short break he began driving again only to come across a sign with three arrows pointing in different directions. One was labeled Malaga, the other was Sevilla and the last was Alcabala. Pedro decided to take the Sevilla route and after driving down it for a while, he stopped again. When he pulled over and got out of the car, he stood there for a second, and then when he looked back to his left, he saw he was standing right outside of his home. He tried to go back to where he had been before, but couldn't find anything that he had seen before, including the sign with the three arrows. Who knows where Pedro was for that while, but I'm very glad that he ended up making it home safely. In our number one spot today we have the story of Lorena Garcia. One morning in 2008, Lorena woke up in a life that was similar to the one she was living when she went to sleep, but certainly not the same. At first it was just small things like her bed sheets and her pajamas, but when she got to work, things began to escalate. Lorena realized that her office wasn't her office and that she worked in the same building, but in a completely different department. She had never even met her boss before, so she knew that this couldn't have been a moment where she just got lost or confused. When she returned home after work that day, she was met by her ex-boyfriend, only to find out that he was apparently her current boyfriend. She tried to find the person that she had been dating for months but he didn't seem to exist in this new life and world that she found herself in. Lorena began to seek psychiatric help because she was fearing that she was having some sort of nervous breakdown, but all tests revealed that she seemed to be of sound body and mind. This strange occurrences continued when Lorena asked her family how her sister was doing. Lorena knew that her sister had recently had shoulder surgery and wanted to check in, but when she asked her family, they were baffled by her claims and insisted that there was no surgery that had taken place on anyone in the family. Lorena couldn't find any answers to her situation and was having no luck with a medical explanation either. She is convinced that she went to sleep one night and woke up in a parallel universe that was altered slightly by small decisions that she had made. Honestly, after all of these stories, I kind of believe Lorena too. Starting off this countdown, we have SpongeBob. Who here is a fan of the sponge that lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. So if you answered yes, then have you seen the 2004 SpongeBob movie? The one where the two goofy goobers, SpongeBob and Patrick, set out to return King Neptune's crown to save Mr. Krabs, and then Plankton tries to take over and yeah. Well, if you've seen this, then
then in one of the final scenes, there's this whole musical number where SpongeBob rocks out to Goofy Goober. At one point, he bursts into a wizard outfit in white boots while rocking on a guitar. Well, take a look at this image. Do you remember SpongeBob playing on a white electric guitar or a weird peanut one? Let me know. I remember him holding a white electric guitar, but apparently that's not right. And he always had a peanut guitar. No, just no, that's not right. We fully switched universes cause SpongeBob never had that guitar, I swear. Moving on to number nine, we have Cheez-Its. But apparently that tasty cheese cracker is not called Cheez-Its. It's cheese it Either I've been saying it wrong my entire life or this is proof that we live in a parallel universe. Like, do you remember it being cheese it or cheese its Cause honestly, cheese it doesn't make sense to me. It needs to be plural because there's more than just one cracker in the box. Now I'm just getting mad here, but someone's out there playing with us, I swear. Moving on at number eight, we have the circle clouds. Ever wondered what life is like in another universe? Well, they might just have circular clouds. Yeah, you heard me. Look at this real image of a circular cloud. Honestly, if I saw that, I would panic thinking that the end is near. Like, it's cool, but also, it's not right. Like, that's a glitch in the matrix or something. Mother nature is glitching. Or maybe that's what normal clouds look like in a parallel universe. Who knows at this point. In our seventh spot, we have the twins. Except the guys in this photo aren't twins. They're not even related. Yet they somehow dressed up in identical outfits and appeared at the same place, both reading newspapers. How creepy is that? Like they even have the same haircut and hairline. Like what is going on? I mean, the sweater is identical, same brand and logo and color. What are the odds? The only difference is that the man on the left is wearing black socks and the man on the right is wearing white socks. One of them is from a parallel universe for sure. It's the same dude, just our universe is glitching or merging with other universes or something like that. Coming in at number six, we have the green KFC. So we all know that the KFC colors are red and white, right? Well, not at this KFC location. Since when does KFC have a green building? Hell no, that makes me uncomfortable. Even Colonel Sanders is wearing a green apron thing instead of a red one. That's not normal. That KFC is in another universe, I swear. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the photo glitch. Okay, someone needs to explain this photo to me. It's not edited at all. The girl just somehow appeared to be gray in the photo. Like, it looks fake, am I right? How is that possible? Unless her goal was to be a gray Santa. This one just hurts my brain. Like if anyone can genuinely explain this photo, then let me know in the comments below. Like how did she appear colorless when everyone else in the photo is in color? I feel like I'm tripping out. Moving on at number four, we have C-3PO. Who here is a fan of Star Wars? Hit that thumbs up button if you are. Well, a lot of diehard fans were shook when they found out that C-3PO does not have an entirely gold body. That's right, apparently he's always had one silver leg. Okay, okay, then explain this to me. How come when I was little, I had a C-3PO figurine that had two gold legs, okay? If someone explain that to me. What do you remember though? Apparently, a ton of fans just remember C-3PO being entirely gold. So, is our memory failing us or are we universe jumping? Ah. In our third spot, we have the Berenstein Bears. Okay, disclaimer, buckle your seatbelts cause I'm about to get heated and passionate for this one. So, do you remember the classic kids book being the Berenstein Bears or the Berenstain Bears? Cause I remember it being the Berenstein Bears, spelled S-T-E-I-N. But no, I've been living a life of lies and deceit because apparently it's always been the Baron Stain Bears. Stain, S-T-A-I-N. What? But I'm not the only one. Thousands of others remember it being the Baron Stain Bears. So theory goes that there are parallel universes out there. In this case, we have the Steen universe and the Stain universe. We lived in the Steen universe during the 90s when the books were out, but then later on, we somehow shifted into the Stain universe. Somehow, the universe ended up overlapping with ours, which is why we remember the Steen books, because they were real, 
but just in another universe. It's just driving me insane. Like, it was the barren steam bears. Okay, why would it be stain? It, do it doesn't make any sense, okay? Like if you agree, like if you agree. And at number two, we have the Looney Tunes. Here's another one that will drive you mad. Or should I say, <laughs> drive you loony. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop with the dad jokes. But do you remember the classic cartoon being Looney Tunes, T-O-O-N-S, or Looney Tunes, T-U-N-E-S? I remember it being Tunes, spelled with two O's. And that makes sense because it's a cartoon. But no, apparently it's tunes, like a music tune, which makes no sense again. Hello, it's a cartoon, not a music tune. I just want to go back to the Tunes universe, like the T-O-O-N-S universe, because everything just makes more sense there, okay? They probably don't have COVID there, just saying. And in our number one spot today, we have the Mona Lisa. Okay, this one really tripped me out. But do you remember the Mona Lisa having a little smirk on her face or a serious face? I remember her always having a slight smirk, not a huge smile, but just a little something something, you know? But in high school, I was taught that she was serious and she didn't smile in the portrait. But get this, in a movie from 1931, it shows the Mona Lisa smiling. This movie is called The Theft of the Mona Lisa. Here's a clip from it. Now, of course, they didn't use the real Mona Lisa for the film, but wouldn't you think that they would get an exact replica for the film? Meaning that she had a smile. Because why all of a sudden would they use a Mona Lisa where she's smiling? Unless back in the day, she was smiling in the portrait, and then somehow we're now in a universe where in the painting, she didn't smile, okay? But that's not all. In a 1962 Looney Tunes, Looney Tunes, sorry, episode titled Louvre Come Back to Me, we can also again see the Mona Lisa smiling. I can tell you chaps one thing. It's not always easy to hold this smile. In the clip, she literally says, I can tell you one thing, it's not always easy to hold a smile. Bam! It's just proof that at one point, the Mona Lisa did have a smile. You see how worked up I get over this? Something's, something's going on here. We're in a parallel universe. It's tripping me out. Mm -hmm. 